what I've tried more and more to do in, 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 in recent years, more mock exams. Mm. Yeah. And mm. revision starts earlier. Yep. That's you right. know, students, students are, are sometimes very good at being sponges and absorbing and absorbing more and more knowledge. Yeah. 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 And I, it's, it's like it's like a fighter going to the gym and building up their muscles. Mm. They've mm. still got to fight. Mm. They still got to fight, and actually, what happens in an exam is that students have to squeeze their sponge and get the knowledge out mm. in the right way. Yeah, and and that 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 is difficult to teach. Yeah, it is. Um, it is, and and it's difficult for them to to learn. And I I encourage my students to do mock exams because that's the only way that they they come are confronted mm. with the reality of how they're mm. going to be assessed mm. and. You know, actors, they do dress rehearsals. Yeah. Footballers, footballers, they have preseason friendlies. You yeah. can't just practice taking penalties. You can't just practice kicking yeah. a ball or heading yeah, yeah, a ball. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to be against an opposition. Right. And then you've got to make decisions. Do you pass it? Do you yeah. do you yeah. kick it backwards? Do you kick it forwards? Yeah. Because a footballer is is having to demonstrate those skills mm. in a new situation. Every mm. game is different mm. and every exam is different and every client is different. That's why, that's why I love the world. Yeah. Because of its diversity, because of its complexity. Yeah. And to reduce it down to debit and credit and two plus two equals four yeah. is not what accounting professionals no. are about. Yeah. With my students, I sort of talk about it as the addiction to knowing the answer. And, <laughs> and it, it's from school, from the way we learn, we were taught to learn. There's the idea that I can't answer a question until you've given me all the information. You know, I need to have all the knowledge first, all the knowledge first. And only then um, can you ask me stuff and I will, you know, I will give you, I will give you the answer. But you have to have told me everything. So it's almost like. But Yvonne, it's irresponsible, especially as an accountant, because, you know, as an accountant, there's a right and a wrong. So Yvonne, it's kind of irresponsible for me to be approaching a question if I don't know my stuff. But that, that's how we learn. That's how we learn as, as well, students. It depends on what you believe learning is. Right, it's a lifelong experience. I'm still learning. Yeah. And I, I, I can see exam questions that colleagues have written. Yeah. And other people have written. And I think, oh, crumbs. I've never really really thought of that particular, I've never come across that scenario. 100%, yeah. And that's why I'm doing the job. Yeah. God, wouldn't it be boring if if I knew all the answers? Right. I've lectured auditing and assurance for about 15 years. So, I mean, I know the staff, you know, I know the staff. And I say to them, like, if, if I look at the questions and the case studies that you're getting, do you think I look at the question and just know the answer? And it's quite fascinating and a little scary that about 90% of them believe that I do. I just, you know, and I'm like, I hate to tell you that I don't. In fact, some of them scare me. Some of them are like, okay, we'll put that aside for another day when I've had more coffee than I have right now. I don't want to look at that. I don't know. I mean, I'm really going to have to work at this. I'm going to have to pull it apart and think about it. And and my point to them is... You have to think about it. You have to think 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 about it. In the exam, they're having to think about it. Yeah. But if if we have the skills through knowledge of the framework, Mm. if we have the analytical skills to understand the the structure of the question Mm. and, and the key words within it, I can normally have a go. Yeah, you know, yeah. I can yeah, understand yeah. The, the 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 experience because I have mm. been, I am regularly in uncomfortable situations. Good comment. Yeah, yeah, because that's not a comfortable situation for any of us when you're faced with something and you're like, "Good question." <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and whenever that, whenever I say a good question, I'm just like buying myself a moment <laughs> to think of the answer. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and, and also passing on a compliment, being positive. Questions yeah. are good. I welcome questions. And yeah, yeah. I encourage that curiosity, that, that questioning. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes when I'm debriefing an answer, I'll give them the wrong answer. Mm. I, will lead them up, I will lead them up a, I'll lead them up a slightly false 
And Aww. it was like, because I need them to challenge me. I how many of them, them do? How, how often does that happen? You can muck about with your body language and you can muck about with, with how things are so that they, they pick up you on the get clue. Something's if, yeah. yeah, because I'm dealing with adults. Mm -hmm. And I'm an adult, mm. albeit one who's got a few more years than them. But I want to break down that barrier of mm. I am up here, they yeah. are down there. No, 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 we're very close. Yeah. Yeah. We're very close. They're shortly going to be my fellow professionals. They're shortly yeah. going to be members of my profession. And right. I need to treat them with respect and they need yep. to be treat me with respect, but not with deference. Mm. And, and things that I say, because I'm a human, you know, need to be, they need to be able to chance. Because in the exam, in, in any form of assessment, the answer is never, oh, everything that has been proposed is correct. There's no ethical dilemmas. They, they've got to have that ability. There's an to, issue. Yeah, they, to communicate, to, to yeah. have confidence in themselves in, mm. that they are right mm. and to challenge, mm. to challenge the written word. Mm. Because often exam questions will say, and, you know, this has been written off to the PL, and actually it shouldn't yeah. have been written off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or it should go to reserves or, or, or whatever mm. as a way of teasing out. Because if they're going to be in a, in a management role, they're going to be in a senior role, they're going to have staff reporting to them mm. who aren't qualified and who do make mistakes mm. and mm. how they then deal with them. So, so, so one of the things that's happening um, within my professional qualification, ACCA at the moment, is they are reviewing the number of marks available and, and, and the timing. And effectively, and I'm, right. I'm going to give a cartoon version here, instead of it being a three and a quarter hour exam for 100 marks, they're making it a three and a quarter hour exam for 80 marks. Right. All right. And yes. they're giving 20 marks for professional skills. Wow, that's quite a lot more than usual. Yeah, tw exactly. Yeah, so this is on some of the optional, optional papers at the mm. final level of ACCA. They're mm. introducing 20 professional marks. Now, and it's clearly going to be a, a detailed criteria yeah. as to how those marks are allocated by the markers. But I think where the ACCA in a broad sense are coming from is they don't want a student answer. They want a piece of work that looks professional, mm. that could be handed to a mm. client or mm. could be handed in to, um, to, to, to a boss mm. for review. So the technical marks are 80, but you've got the time in the exam to polish it, to, mm. to, to reflect a good exam, a good assessment, testing at the final level here, going into the workplace, will give the student a situation that they've not come across before. Mm. It, it, that there will be a, a synthesis of ideas, Oh, COVID has hit. There's a COVID restriction. What's that got to do with going yeah. concern? Well, if you look in a textbook, you won't find <laughs> you won't find mm. COVID in a textbook. You know, after it's, next year you will. Well, <laughs> after next year you will, I'm sure. <laughs> and maybe will. I've just dated this um, <laughs> this interview. I've often wanted to rule the world, and <laughs> for there to be no no time to do an exam. Yep. Yep. The, the, the candidate can turn up at nine o'clock in the morning yeah. and be there at nine o'clock at night. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And so instead of it being a time pressured exam, it's actually a, a, a test. Now, I, I, you know, I don't rule the world. And I, I, if I did, maybe I wouldn't, maybe my bluff would be called and I wouldn't introduce that. But I do like, <laughs> I do like that, that, that yeah. model of, yeah. of um, an exam. Yeah. Because at work, you know, you're set a task at work. And it, you're not told you've got to hand this piece of work in in three hours' time. And you're not allowed to Two talk to anyone. Time. You're not, you're not allowed, allowed to Google. talk to anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, 100%. So, so and that was just not on the cards five years ago. No, no. No, and like, if I think of the exams I wrote, and obviously, I, you know, in your position, same thing. You keep, you know, every year you look at the latest paper, you look at the, and you're like, oh, I'm so glad I didn't write that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wouldn't have passed that back in my day. You know, back in my day, I learned how to do a statement of funds flow. We didn't even do a cash flow statement. 
back in my day there was no IFRS yes back in my day yeah. there was no sustainability reporting yeah so my yeah. my technical qualification yeah you could argue is out of date 100 percent, 100 percent. but it's the mindset that I learned mm. about learning that mm -hmm. has kept me that mm -hmm. has kept me up to date and mm. you know some of my some of my students go into tax some of my students go into audit so I get that they won't always be obsessed with the nuances of all the new accounting standards coming out as mm. they mm. as they develop their own career but if you're in tax you've mm. got to keep up to date mm. with tax if you're in if you find yourself in mergers and acquisitions and corporate treasury you because do that. the qualification as an accountant is a is a is a springboard yeah you know it's a start you I, not an end yeah correct you yeah. and i have gone down the academic route the teaching route mm. yeah that mm. that you know that 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 route and and some of our students will as well but it's not every accountant is an accountant yeah 100%. you know they gained mm. the knowledge of how business works mm. and they've gained skills mm. and that the, the letters after their name the badge carries mm. a credibility mm. that they're not just google 100 percent. you see the volume of work in you know each of these majors or each of these subjects and you kind of like, am i am i supposed to remember all this stuff like when i start working you know like i'm gonna lose this stuff you need to understand the difference between the reason that i'm teaching you this particular standard now isn't because i think that it's going to stay this way forever and you have to remember this one now um i need you to work with it and learn how to learn stuff because next year when a new standard is introduced for transactions and stuff that didn't exist a few years ago cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency for example exactly are you going to return your degree you know are you going to return your certificate and go well i guess i better start again no, you're expected by your profession to go, okay, here we go again. Let me go and do some training. Let me think, let me apply. Um, and you need to have the ability to sift through the new stuff and go, how does this affect me? And how does, and you're not going to have, you know, the, the textbook and the, like you say with COVID, you know, the textbook and the suggested solutions and, 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 and you have to find other ways to solve the problem and, and figure out, what to do with it and i think for me for a lot of my students that's a big shift if like so you're telling me this isn't it so if i learn all my accounting standards like you know is this not i'm like no <laughs> when i talk to my students i talk about it as a difference between um crystal and clay most of my students spend a lot of time building beautiful crystal glasses you know like crystal ornaments of their knowledge because it's got to be perfect and polished and like beautiful but you can't touch it you can't do anything else with it. Like you've got to be, it's brittle. You know, it doesn't change. Like that is all I know. That is my, and it's beautiful. You know, this is like a work of art because our students work very hard on knowledge, you know? Sure, sure, sure. And then I'm like, sweet. But now your client comes in and says, you know, I don't want a glass. I want a plate. Now I've only <laughs> got a glass, you know, so that's the only thing I can give you as opposed to learning your, you know, learning that knowledge and your knowledge base is clay and you're going to be expected in every assessment, in every situation, you're going to be expected to make something different. I mean, it, a similar analogy I use, I fall back on sport, you know, <laughs> learning to defend yeah. and the striker is, you know, short Maradona, you know, or is a, is a big, tall, lanky Abramovich and you've got to be able to defend against both. And, mm. uh, you know whether whether the striker you're defending against has got speed has got skill every striker is going to be different so you, you have to learn your skills yeah so yeah. that you can apply them in different situations yeah the, the 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 attitude that students bring to an exam day the routine that they have mm. their ability to cope under pressure their ability to react to an unknown situation is so important and that is a skill that needs to be practiced and the best way of practicing that i think is through mock mm. exams mm. getting the feedback mm. and and themselves also reflecting on the mm. experience because it's not just about having the muscles it's not just about having the abilities but having the mindset so tennis players rugby players yeah all sports people seem to have coaches these days don't they and they're coaching 
this is how you hit the ball. But there's but, someone else in the background, we all know, who's coaching and saying, visualize success. 100%. You know, and when you've lost the game, yeah. what have yeah. you learned from it? Yeah. What have yeah. you learned from what have you learned from doing that mock exam and failing that mock exam? Mm. And mm. I say, well, hang on a minute. You can't fail a mock exam because it's a mock. Mm. What you've got is a learning opportunity. You may have got 40 out of 100 and your pass mark is 50. So you've done 40 good things. Yeah. Let's work out what they are and how you can make sure you do those again. And you've mm. got to get an extra 10 marks. Mm. And let's work out, let's, let's look at some signposting. Let's look at how you can improve. So I don't care about failure. I don't like the word failure. Mm. I don't use the word failure. It's mm. not, it's, we're not, we're not training people to be brain surgeons or, or airline pilots where they have an airline pilot has to get it right. Yeah. And a brain surgeon <laughs> yeah. has to get it right. Yeah. And, and, and the, yeah, the competence yeah, yeah. levels there are 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah. That's all or nothing, right? 100%. It's all or nothing. Right. You, you either land that plane safely or everyone dies. Yeah. Yeah. We're accountants. We have a real life complex judgmental situation. Mm. And it may not be clear whether the insurance claim will go through. Mm. It may not be clear mm. exactly what the value in use is. Mm. because in an exam scenario you may not have all of the information one part of the mm. answer might be and i need to know this information and i would need to do this test mm. and i would need to find out a bit more and that's mm. relevant mm. but it's not about the answers for and i'm not a mountaineer but i did some mountaineering um in the alps um, a few years ago and we hired a couple of guides and they stretched us they absolutely stretched us and we we achieved more and did yeah. more and climbed higher and went down um you know you know put on these ice picks and stuff and it was like wow we can do this yeah with a good guide mm. and mm. who you trust to get out of your comfort zone and you then learn and your mm. world is expanding mm. Mm. the world is expanding a large part of that is your perspective on the journey versus the result because we all want to have the result you know we all want to be in that space of going wow look what I did and I did more than I thought I was but it's it takes it takes a very specific mindset to say I'm in the horrible part right now and I have to believe that it's not going to be like this forever and I have to have confidence that I can take another step and that I can go get help or that there is a better way to do this or something. But, you know, if, if your ideal, if your instinct in the moment is, well, that's it, that's all I've got. <laughs> I'll never be able to do any more. I've reached the pinnacle of my intelligence and ability. And so here we are. Let me, you know, um, then you're not going to take another step because you don't believe it will be worthwhile. You don't, you know, so it's, it's very much about your perspective of in the moment, do you see past the wall? Or do you see that wall as, well, that's it. It's my destiny. There's nothing I can do about it. And so I can't, clearly I'm not smart enough. You know, it's something I hear from my students so often is like, I don't think I'm smart enough for this because that wall is just so big. And I'm like, what, what breaks my heart is that they're looking at a wall thinking it's a wall of intelligence that's holding them back. And I'm like, it's actually a mental wall, not an intelligence wall. People need to be inspired. Um, and, and have the confidence to have a go and not be frightened of failure. Yeah. Mistakes yeah. are just learning opportunities. 100%. I'd rather you freak out and try the nastiest questions and mock exams before the exam, yes. you know, instead of protecting yourself and making yourself feel better, yes. you know, during your studying. And then on the day of the exam, you, you know, throw your brain in the deep end with the sharks and go, oh, well... <laughs> <laughs> there you are i think we're both yvonne coming at it from a point of view of of knowing that this works because we've seen time and time again young people make mistakes mm. learn from the mistakes mm. grow yeah. change their attitude and become successful professionals yeah so when we're talking to to, to, to those to those people who, who are seemingly scared of of failure and want to cling to knowledge yeah 
we um, we we know what we're talking about. It's 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 um, it's scary for them. It's scary for some of them. Yeah. Um, but you know yeah. they've got to be a little bit. Of, of, the dividends are there. Yeah. Investing in your yeah. confidence and investing in your knowledge and trusting your teacher. Mm. You know, we, we, we we've got no we've got no axe to grind. We want to develop them as people. Mm. And develop to develop the profession. Looking at the exams I was preparing students for 15 years ago, um, it's not the same anymore. So I've had to shift and, you know, I've had to change the things I focus on and the things that I do. And And the kids are coming through. The kids are coming through with phones. The kids are coming through with a a different experience of education. I mean, I have taught, I've taught in over 40 different countries throughout the world. So I've seen all sorts of people from different backgrounds and cultures and whatever. Um, and there is a there is a there is a shift that there are there are some things which are, are common that you, you talk about that attitude of wanting to rope learn mm. and that's a that's a defensive that's a mm. that's a characteristic and and you, mm. you talked about how people want numbers and the safety of a right answer mm. Mm. but those, those things are generic it doesn't it, it sort of doesn't matter whether you're black or white whether you're christian or muslim those those things as accountants tend to tend to happen but as educators mm. we've got to move the mindset yeah to open yeah. the brand yeah. open yeah. to new ideas mm. and mm. to make sure that when we are when we are telling the stories and we are engaging them with 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 how accounting is an art we infuse it with ethics that yeah. we we infuse it with judgment mm. and that we infuse it with passion like you have mm. you know so that they embrace that they yeah. embrace that that those yeah. opportunities that, that yeah. having the right mindset works the world is so much more exciting this way yes. there's more yeah. opportunities you know there's the opportunities more, many more opportunities absolutely it's and that so brings much a certain responsibility exciting. because they think yeah. oh i could get it wrong but do, do you know what you just yeah you, know, you, you you regret you regret the things that you don't do as an older person i can look back and say <laughs> i regret the things that i haven't done More rather than the things that i have done yeah 100 so if, if in doubt say yes jump in none of us have you know smooth clean happy you know beautiful paved journeys of marble you know that we got from where we were to where we are everybody has their stories their hurdles their challenges their you know the things that got in the way the tangents the parts everybody's got their own version of that it's a lot easier to look back and connect the dots than it is when you're in the moment and go this is not okay and i am not enjoying this right now it's i think it's so important to to share stories of when stuff has gone wrong for people that they can kind of see that there is a connection at some point in time they're going to turn around and go okay i know why that happened um, and you have the choice to either make it advantageous for you or you know disadvantageous it's your choice how you deal with that if if you allow it to make you back off and go and hide in a corner that's your choice you know if if you allow it to be or if you choose to make it something that changes your life changes other people's lives go i'm okay with this i will fix it i will do what i can and i will move on and i will grow from this then you're going to look back and go yeah okay so Sure, I'm not thrilled that that happened, but I can see how that got me where I am today. And it's not a, it's not a death threat. You know what I mean? It's not like a execution. Every, that's it. Into every life, a little rain must fall. Yeah. But every cloud has a silver lining. And yep. so we look for the positives. Yeah, we look for the lessons to be learned. That's the right mindset. Yeah, yeah. And no, so no with- one, no one ever gets hundred percent in an exam. No. If, it, if they get 100% in a final assessment, it's a bad exam. Something, yeah, something's wrong. Like you slept with someone, something went right. <laughs> something, <laughs> something's not okay there. Like. And the exciting thing is that you don't know what the future holds because, you know, you have no idea what amazing opportunity, career, path, choice, job, whatever. You have no idea what's coming yeah. next month, no, next I, year, I, which I is amazing. Phone, yeah, I had a phone call at the age of 50. Yeah, Where I want to go and live and work in Singapore. And yeah. I was um, at a crossroads 
in my in my in my employment at that time and on the back of that phone call uh, you know a week later i said yes and wow. uh, moved out to singapore and that was you know having being a qualified accountant enabled me to do that yes. my skills were, yeah. were, were yeah. transfer I, I taught over in southeast asia but only as a visiting uh, mm. person and so mm. to have the opportunity to go there and to live there mm. was an opportunity that i wouldn't have seen before the opportunity came along, I was only yeah. there because I had got my qualification and I mm. had an open mindset. Yeah, and and doing that doesn't mean that you had everything you needed before you started, right? Because it comes no. with challenges. It comes with it, unseen it, things that were, you have to There were to organizational fix things mm. exactly. I was, you know, teaching in Cambodia, and teaching in Cambodia is different to teaching in Hong Kong. You've got a different environment in which you're teaching. You've got students from a different culture, which made it more enjoyable for me mm. because it was different mm. and the students had mm. a, came from a different place, but we were all aiming for the same place. Yeah. And so, you know, that, that's a good thing. And the profession, mm. the accounting profession, is, is, I think, one of diversity, and that yep. brings a strength yeah. To the profession. It's an open profession. Right. Well, for male and female, you know, it's moving that way mm. much more than some other professions are. Mm. Mm. Um, so it's it's it is, and, and the, the qualification I, I teach ACCA is very into open access yeah. and an opportunity. And and that's the mindset, I think, that you know, these opportunities are there. If you can get this benchmark, but get, having this badge of yes. an accountant, having yeah. this badge of having this degree gets you the interview, gets you the interview, right. doesn't get you the job. Right, right, You've right. still got to bring, it doesn't bring you a right. It doesn't no. bring you rights. And it doesn't keep you the job. It doesn't keep you the job. What keeps you the, you the job, what gets you the job is your personality, is your attitude to work, your attitude to learning. Yeah. As a professional, you ask for help. I am certain of that. I know I ask for help. Yep. You know, and that's yep. that's not like a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. Yeah. That we are connected yes. as individuals. Yeah. So what's it saying? I think if you want to go fast, go alone. And if you want to go far, take take others. Because if you think that you're always going to be the smartest person in the room, oh no. You know, oh no. Oh no. You know, students kind of think. Okay, if I'm going to be the CFO, if I'm going to be, you know, the financial director, I need to be the one in the room that has all the answers, and I need to know everything about, you know, all the tax, all of, you know, all the efforts, all the everything. You're never going to sleep, one, um, and it's impossible. But two, that's not the reason you're there. You know, that's not what makes a great financial director. The, you know, the dude who's got all the answers in the room is not the one who's going, you know, to make the best financial director it's and like asking acknowledging that you don't have the expertise in everything because you can't it's impossible um and kind of going like can we get some insight can we get some input can we get some expertise advice um and as you say so you know in terms of the sports but it's increasingly executive coaches were not really things that existed like 10, 15 years ago. You know, the idea, I remember someone mentioned to me, oh, it must have been like 10 years ago now, like, you know, maybe, you know, get a management coach or performance or an executive coach. And I was a little horrified. Like, is there something wrong with me? And at the moment, to our students, we are their coach. Yes, true. And they, they, they have to trust us. Yeah. Even though, you know, they have, they have to trust us. Yeah. That we are acting in their best interest. Yeah. in giving them advice to get outside of their comfort zone yeah giving them advice to to change their mindset mm. um, because yeah. because they're going to be in the workplace for 30 40 years <gasps> know. you yeah. know um the world is a is a yeah. the, and the world is going to be very different the world is going to be very different when they mm. retire the mm. world is very different when i'm going to really? retire 100 when i started work there were no computers when I started work, there was no Wi-Fi. When I started work, you know, I had a desk and people were employed in the typing pool and there were people <laughs> who, you know, walked around delivering envelopes. Yeah, the yep. morning post was, was a routine. 
and one can only imagine right. how things will well, well, not, no one can't imagine no one can't how, imagine how, we know how, this how a 20 year old now yes what, what, how, how what their world of work will be so no. the important thing is that they are open-minded and they have a lifelong passion for right. learning and they are flexible and they say yes so there was that discussion at that point you know in in your career is like oh, okay there's computers and and computerized accounting systems so therefore you're going to be obsolete in the discussions that we've we've had i think we've alluded to but i, I kind of want to make it kind of specific as a rounding off is do we think that accountants are going to be obsolete because of all this stuff about the fourth industrial revolution technology artificial intelligence etc are accountants going to become obsolete the answer to that question is yes and no if by an accountant you mean somebody who um, adds up a bunch of invoices and posts it into a ledger and writes it up in a book and does a debit and a credit, probably yes, there are less of those jobs going to be around because of IT, because of artificial intelligence. But if you are describing an accountant as somebody who helps to measure profit, who helps to interpret the performance of the business, in its return on capital, in its environmental impact, and is a communicator of technical information to the survival of the business that in, gives, gives management information so that they make the right decisions. Oh my God, they're needed even more. In a changing yeah. world, mm. accountants are the future. They are so needed. But it's with a skill set mm. and with a mindset. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a number cruncher, your days are gone. If you're a number cruncher, Excel spreadsheets are, you know, not your friend, are they? Or, or you know, so, 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 so number crunching is, 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 is a part of accounting, mm. but it's not the mm. quality of the job. It's not the impact that we have. It's what those numbers mean. Mm. And it's the, is understanding the algorithms. It's understanding the impact of the accounting policy. It's understanding the impact on going concern. Mm. It's understanding the, the, the impact on the share price and the cash flow mm -hmm. of making changes to the accounting statements and, and mm. how that works out. So that is holistic. Mm. And that, that at this moment in time, as I sit here in the 21st century, can't be done by a computer. Mm. And, and yeah. it's, it's those higher level emotional skills and mm. communication skills and mm. judgment skills and ethic skills that the future generations need more and more and more, unless mm. the ability to quickly add up a, a bunch of numbers. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I, I I totally agree. I think the accounting profession is more exciting than it's ever been. Um, the broader that you look at what you can do and the value that you can add and your skills, you know, um, I think it's far more exciting than, especially if you con compared to what I thought an accountant would be doing when, <laughs> when, when I was studying. <coughs> I had, yeah. <laughs> by default, yeah. we have a bit of a narrower perspective of what you're going to be doing with your life. I mean, it's like medicine, isn't it? You know, medicine has radically changed yeah. the amount of, yeah. uh, you know, technology and tools and diagnostic and tests yeah. Um, that I need, but we still need doctors. Yeah, we still need doctors, even though they've got technology. They use yeah. the technology to make their to make better decisions for the benefit yeah. of the patient. Yeah, and we can use technology to make better decisions right. for the business. Yeah, um, yeah. I really, I really appreciate your your perspective, and um, thank you, thank you very much for your time. A real pleasure, Yvonne. A real pleasure. Anytime. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you very much.